What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to work on the comment section for a blog with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to look at the comment section for our blog. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so people have been asking about the comment section for like weeks now, uh, so we're going to start to look at it in this video. Now, I'm not sure how complicated of a comment section we're going to build for this simple blog we're doing. We may get into it in, in great detail or we may just do some sort of little superficial thing I haven't really decided yet. We'll just sort of see how it goes. In this video we're going to just sort of set the groundwork uh, and uh, the foundation for some of these things. So let's head over to our models.py file in our, let's see, the blog directory. So there we go. And you'll see we've got our category model, our profile model that we've been working on in the last few videos. And we've got our post model from way back at the beginning of the course. And this is the thing that handles all of our blog posts. So we're going to be commenting on blog posts. So we need to associate this post model with a new comment model. So let's go ahead and just come down here and create our new comment model. So let's go class and let's call it comment. And we want to inherit models.model as always. And the first thing I'm going to do is have a post, right? And this is going to be our sort of our foreign key that connects this comment model with this post model. And we've done this sort of thing before, like right here. In fact, we can just copy this whole thing. Uh, when we associated our, you know, our user with our post. So I'm just going to paste this in. And this is models dot foreign key. Now we don't want to do this on user, we want to do this on post, which is just the name of our post model, right. And then on delete models cascade, that means when a blog post gets deleted, go ahead and automatically delete the comments that are associated with it. So alright, so one thing that's a little different here, we're going to add one more thing, we're going to add a related underscore name, and we're going to call this comments. This is just going to allow us to reference this model as comments later on, on the blog post page. So we'll call comments, we'll grab all the comments. And uh, that's just how, how we're going to name this thing. So okay, that's really the heavy lifting of this whole thing. After that, we just need to determine what else we want to save in a comment. So let's just keep it simple at the beginning, we want to keep uh, we want to record the person's name, whoever's making the comment, right. So this is going to be a models dot car field. And we've done this before. And let's just give this a max underscore length of like 255. And again, this is a lowercase l, not a capital L. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Sublime does that drives me crazy. And we also want to record the body of the comment, like right? the comment itself. So let's call that body. And this is going to be models dot text field. Right? And we can just leave that blank inside of there. And the text field we've done those before in the past. Uh, let's see like the bio here was the text field text fields are like big boxes. And you know, versus like little boxes, little input boxes for other things on forms. Okay, so that is probably enough. We also probably want to record the uh, date added. Right. So when the when the comment was made, we probably want to record that. So let's go models dot date time field. And let's set this to auto underscore now underscore add equals true. And I think we've done auto now add other times in our models. Yeah, like right here for this date field, it just add, it just automatically adds the date to the post without the person having to like type in the date, right. So okay, that looks good. And so like I said, we're just going to keep this really simple at first. And this is probably good enough. We also probably want to come down here. So remember our Django admin area for this model to show up there we might want to define it in a certain way so that it shows up easily and more readable, like we've done in the past. So and we could do that if we want, let's just define underscore underscore str underscore underscore, and then pass in self. And then we just want to return, I don't know, let's go. Well, let's go s, and then a dash and then another 
percent sign s and then let's sort of swap those things out for self.post.title um, and self.name, I guess. So on our admin area, this will show the post title that we're commenting on and the person's name that commented, right? So, all right, we'll see what that is in just a minute. Okay, so this looks good. So now we need to make a migration. Anytime we do a major change to our database, you remember it's always a two-step process. We make a migration and then we push a migration. So let's head back over to our terminal and let's control C to break out of the terminal. So let's go Python manage.py make migrations. And this is plural. And we're getting an error here. So let's head back over here. And we see I forgot a comma. So all right. That looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this head back over to our terminal. Give this another try. So Python manage.py make migrations. All right, there's our migration. And then Python manage.py migrate. And this will push the migration into the database. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and Python manage.py run server to make our server run again. And let's head back over to our code. And now that we've added this comment model, let's head over to our admin section admin.py and go ahead and register this guy so that it appears on our Django admin area. So up here, we need to import comment. And then down here, let's go admin.site.register and then just pass in that comment. So now this will show up in our Django admin sort of area. So let's head over to there and just take a look real quick. Let's hit reload, make sure this is still working. Looks like it is. So this post right here, image test, I added some dummy text here just to flesh it out a little bit. And so let's add a comment to this thing. Now, obviously we haven't created the system to add a comment on this page yet, and we'll get into that later. But just for now, we can add one in the Django admin area. So image test two is the post we wanna add it to. So let's go to our admin area, and I'm already logged in as admin. And you can see comments is now in our admin area here because we just registered it in our admin.py file. So if we click here, we can see there's no comments yet, we can add one. So what post we want, uh, we wanted image test two. So our name is John Elder. And this is my very first blog comment. Woohoo, isn't it awesome? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> All right, so okay, let's go ahead and save this. And so now here we've got this comment. Now, you know, whoop de doo that's not that great. So let's head, oops, let's head back over to our blog and let's click on this image test too. And obviously it doesn't show up. So let's go ahead and change the page to where it does show up. Now we've got this back button. It just goes back to the home page. Maybe we'll get rid of that. That's kind of weird. And then maybe underneath the likes, we'll put the comment section. So let's head back over to our code. And we want, let's see, in our the blog directory templates article details, this is the page that handles all of our blog post stuff. And we could scroll down here to the like section. Uh, here's the bio section, obviously. And profile pic, and here we see likes. And let's see, this back button, I just, I, I don't know, I don't think we need it. I'm gonna take that out. Let's save this and just take a look. And that's probably better. And then underneath the like section, let's put a comment section. So. So here's the like stuff and just kind of look through here to the end of it. And here's some line breaks. Okay, so, so let's go, I don't know, H2 and go comments. Let's save this and take a look. Yeah, that's probably good right there. Okay, so underneath here, we need to run an if statement. So let's go if not, and we wanna call posts.comments.all. Remember, these our post model and our comments model are connected with a foreign key. So we can call the comments through the post model, which is already showing up on this page because we're getting the blog post from the page. So we can go post.comments.all. Now why comments instead of comment? 
plural instead of singular. You'll notice our model is singular comment. But right here, where we did where we designated the foreign key thing, we set this, let me pull this over, we set this related name to comments. So we can reference dot comments and it will pull all of the stuff out from our comment model. So that's pretty cool. So what do we want to call? We want to say all. If there are any comments, grab them all sort of and see if there are. And if there's not any comments, if not comments, then let's go no comments yet, dot, dot, dot. Let's go a her f equals, and let's just put a dummy comment thing or a dummy link. And the, let's go uh, add one, All right? So if no po comments, put this little bit of text. Uh, let's go else. If there are comments, uh, and while I'm thinking about it, let's just end our if statement. Else, put them on the screen. Well, there could be one comment, there could be a thousand comments. So uh, we're grabbing all of them, and we need to loop through them. So we need a loop. So let's go for comment in comments. And it's not comments, it's post.comments.all. So look up all the comments, and we're saying for each comment in there, then uh, we can just put out anything we want. So let's start out with the name. So we could go comment.name, right? And we want to put a dash. And we also want probably comment.date um, added, right? And I'm going to put these in a strong tag. So that'll make it bold, right? In fact, let's just do it like this. And then let's put a line break. And then let's put the actual comment itself. So that would be comment.body. And I'm getting these things, obviously, name, date added, and body from our model. We just called this name, date added, and body, right? So, OK. So let's see, look at that. It looks good. Let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here and hit reload. Uh oh. End if. Oh, we forgot to end our four. See, I was so good about ending the if, I forgot to end the four. <laughs> All right, so let's go end four. All right, so now save this, run it. Boom, we have comments, bold this. Now we need some separation between these things. So let's. Let's do that real quick. And I'm just going to kind of rough this in for now. So after comments, let's put uh, another line break. After this guy, we probably want a couple of line breaks, maybe a horizontal rule. I don't know. You can play around with this. Right? Maybe we want a horizontal rule above comments. And, and as always, this is not a. Uh, design course. I'm not good at designing things. So we're just going to kind of play around with this. All right, so we're getting some separation there. That's decent. I don't know, whatever. Actually, I want to take out this one, maybe, or at least move it out of the loop. Like there. Okay, so let's save this come back here. That won't have changed anything. But let's head over. Let's open another tab. And let's add Oh, let's go back to the admin area. Let's just add another comment just to see. Uh, let's see, add comment, image test two. My name is now Ted Elder, All right? Uh, this is the second comment, misspelled comment. Save it. Now we come back over here and hit reload. We get a second one. Now, I get it, right? This is not stylish or cool looking, and we'll work on all that later. But at least now we have the basics of a comment system. Now there's no nesting here, you can not answer comments and reply to comments and things like that. We might get into that later, haven't really decided if we really want to dig that far into it, just sort of depends on how interested people are, I think. But uh, at least now we have the beginnings of a comment section. And we can come back here and go to a different blog post. And we could see no comments yet. Click here to add one. We don't have a link to, to add one, to go to the form to add one. We could maybe put the form itself on the page. I don't know, that looks kind of cluttered to me. I think I would rather just have a link that opens up another, you know, 
web page where you can write your comment or whatever. Uh, we'll decide that later, but uh, yeah, come on right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.